Hey everybody. Well, it's that time of year again. The time of year when the ducks and the geese and the caravans migrate north from their winter wintering grounds back up north to do whatever ducks and geese do. But the caravan, she's going back up to Baldwin, Wisconsin to throw skydivers all over the sky for another season. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm ferrying the caravan up to uh, Baldwin, Wisconsin. I'm here in Orange, Virginia, where the caravan spent the winter. And it's gonna be a long flight because of course it's headwinds the whole way. And of course, the weather's never perfect. I'm gonna have to deal with um, Winter Storm Thurmond or whatever it is. So I've got some low ceilings and visibility and snow and rain and lightning and volcanoes and an eclipse and all kinds of problems that I'm gonna to have to deal with today. But we'll see how far we can get before it gets dark and I get scared. Anyway, let's go fly the caravan. Alrighty, well here we go. We're heading off from Orange, Virginia. See if we can make it to Baldwin, Wisconsin. Looks like it's going to be a fun trip. If not a long one. One of the things that's real fun about the caravan is it doesn't have an autopilot. Wah. I mean, it's got one. It just, you know, doesn't work. I mean, who needs an autopilot anyway? I got these things called hands, and they go on the steering wheel, and they do all the stuff with the things. Which should work just fine. Yes, undercarriage, mixture, props, pumps, trims are set, seats where I like it. Flight controls free and correct. Engine instruments are good. Time is 6.20, and away we go. Speed's alive, and when it's just me and the plane, she gets up real nice and fast. And we're off. And right away, we've got some mountains in our way and, you know, some mountain obscuration because it's snowing and crappy out and still not horrible, horrible. A little bit of snow over the mountain make things good and interesting. See what we got for ceilings ahead of us here. Right here it's not bad. Uh, nine, ten thousand over the mountains, that's good. I'll at least be able to get over the mountains before I get into the bad stuff, which is nice, but I got some uh, 1,200 foot ceilings, 14, 800. Then it improves. Looking at the weather this morning, it looked like it was going to be really challenging. There was some 600-foot overcast, so a couple of spots where it was 300 feet, but I figured by the time I actually got going, it would be better. Yeah, a couple of two- and 300-foot ceilings just popped up. I could see, yeah, it's snowing pretty good over the mountains over on that side. That's one thing to scud run over the flatlands when you're kind of Flying over mountains, even the Smoky Mountains, which are not the Rockies, but still pretty hard hills. You want to make sure you got good visibility, or at least moderate visibility. So this first ridge I came over, no problem. Looks like the looks like the uh, mountains are about a thousand feet below the clouds. They're obscured of, off to my north. And straight at my 
direction of flight, it looks... Maybe? I'm going to keep going. I see a... 1,200 foot. 1,200 foot will do. It's a little bumpy. There's a bit of wind up here, but it's not crazy. Okay, another set of ridges I have to cross. Ooh. Getting a little bumpy. And I can see the ridge ahead of me and the ridge after that, so the visibility is still okay. Up ahead, I got 1,400 foot ceiling. Mountains and clouds and snow and sunset. I love it when a plan comes together. That area right in front of me looks a little darker than some of the other areas. I'm going to scoot a little north. I see on the radar I got a little snow, a little snow action going there. Now if I was just out pleasure flying today, I wouldn't be doing this. But as a ferry pilot and the actual customer, because I'm the one who needs this plane tomorrow, I'm pushing things just a little bit. You know, reduce visibility, snow, mountains. Not the greatest combination in the world, but we're still showing 1,400 foot ceilings. Climbing to 3,400. I'm still going to go around this little spot there. Kind of sneaking up toward the 4,000 foot ceilings. At least that's what they're saying. That's not what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing ahead of me is zero visibility, mountain obscuration. I love saying that. My wife makes fun of me for that. And stuff like that. Now, there's blue sky. I can climb up there, punch through these holes. I'd rather not have to do that. I've always got the good old-fashioned 180 in my back pocket. Remember, kids, always keep that in your back pocket. Have an escape route. Whenever you're scud running or flying into challenging conditions or anything, have a back door. You can go ahead a little bit. Don't overfly your visibility. It's kind of like don't overdrive your headlights. And you should be fine. Now, if you don't have the skills to handle something like this and an IFR rating and current and a plane that can go IFR, that's always also a bad idea. I have all those things. I got a lot of experience scud running in the mountains and all over the world. But that doesn't mean I'm invincible. Not at all. Hey, this last little gap here, I don't, I shouldn't say last, this gap I'm coming up to here is kind of close. It's kind of like a sucker hole. My plan is, you can see, I don't know, five, six miles ahead. Woo! If it keeps going, I'll keep going. If not, I'm going to punch up. Oh, there comes some snow. I don't know. This looks like a bad fucking idea. Oh, that looks like a real bad idea. Not doing that. So, huh. plan B, which I don't have yet. I've got my back door. Look how beautiful it is behind me.
Well, this doesn't seem like it's getting any better at all. Look, I'm going to have to go south. Yep, north was worse. South looks better. Got to go about, eh, how far is that? 30 miles south out of my way. Good thing I've got an airplane. Airplanes are fast. Well, not this one. Some airplanes are fast. Yeah, that stuff over there, that's what you don't want to fly into. And that will suck you in, and you get down into the valleys, and pretty soon you're IFR. And in this case, I'd have been climbing straight up. Get out of that stuff. Good thing the caravan, this thing, with its 900 horsepower Garrett, tons of power. I'd have shot up through the top of this stuff. Man, it's only 1,000 feet thick. But that was... That's an emergency plan. You don't want to rely on your emergency plan. That's the last ditch, don't get killed move. Much better to take the 45 minute flight out of your way. Just loop around the south. I got lots of gas filled up here. You know, a lot of people ask me when I get in situations like this when you're kind of pushing it, you know, the, the limits are there. You can see them. And then ask if I get scared. I don't really get scared because it doesn't help. You know, panicking. You got time to panic. You got time to do something more productive. So I just kind of try to stay analytical. Look at my options. Keep my back doors open. Look, I got this beautiful to the east. Great big sunny sky. It's all kinds of beautiful. To the west, it is exactly the opposite. I'm flying along. This mountain ridge line here, it looks like when I get up over that next next ridge as it kind of cuts across, it looks like it gets nicer. Nicer. Now I always could have turned around and gone back to orange. Stayed with Elijah, the pilot that used to fly for us last year. He's flying here at Orange this year. He's got a house, free place to stay, get up in the morning, do that. But there's no guarantee that it's going to be nice in the morning. And being six hours from the drop zone, and we're opening at 1 o'clock, that means i got to get rolling really fast. And I like to get up early in the morning. And I've got a job to do tonight, so at least get halfway. We'll see what happens. Yep, things got worse. We might have to go quite a ways south to get around this stuff. Which is annoying because the plane is really expensive per hour and the gas isn't cheap either. Snow showers reducing visibility everywhere. I still can see about 10 miles ahead of me, but it's, it's a hazy 10 miles. All right, so I went about 35 miles south of my course to kind of get away from the worst of the low overcast and snow and stuff. And the next couple airports have 1,600 and 2,000 foot broken ceilings. So I'm being optimistic. I'm still leaving my back door open. It's still pretty mountainy and security and sporty to be honest 
But I got some good visibility ahead. I can see quite a that very last mountain range up ahead of me. Well, ridge, ridge line. Alright, well, that didn't go quite as planned. Got a little sporty out there. You know, one of the problems when you're trying to go through a bunch of mountains is all the airports that are in the mountains are located down in the valleys, so they're all reporting VFR, but the peaks are all obscured. And I decided to call it a night. You know, it was didn't look like it was going to get any better. It was bordering on the stupid so I decided I better just land stopped in here at uh, Greenbrier Airport in Lewisburg West Virginia and I'm gonna catch a shuttle to the hotel and call it a night and try it again in the morning that's what you get for pushing it 